April 12th, 2022. Roll call, please. Mayor Webb. Here. Mayor Pro Tem McFall. Here. Councilmember Lathiro. Here. Councilmember Sullivan. Here. Councilmember Londo. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America.
west part of the mine, in, in the shopping area, or on the Woodward, they're all right there next door to us. So that was the second thing. Okay, and then um, to spark in the park, I have concerns about the number of people attending. I've also been on uh, nextdoor.com. Some of the Ferndale people are saying they don't want all these people here because they're worried about parking, you know, all those kinds of things that are going into it. Uh, my friends are saying who's going to clean up the litter, who's, who's going to police it, will they pay for police charges? Um, also, are they going to they damage the baseball diamond? Will the baseball diamond be repaired? Those kinds of things. And then we have another question, which I think Ed can answer, which is, is the city going to make any money on this? You know, are we going to get paid something for having this festival? Okay. But then that led to another thought I had, which is, the, the image of Hazel Park itself. Do we really want to be known as Hotville? You know, you know is, this, is this the direction, direction we want to go in? Because, because you know, if we're trying, trying to market the city to young families, there's, there's going to be some, some concern once their kids get a little bit older. If we're marketing the city to retirees, they may not want to have a bunch of young kids hanging around at night. I don't know. But I was just thinking, it's, there's been a lot of this going on, and we're, we're right smack of the lead. I think Berkeley has five. I don't know too many places that have seven. So anyway, that's where I want to stop and leave it with you. Thank 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 you. I'm, I'm also here to talk, speak about, about uh, Spark in the Park. There's, there's a few things that, that I'd like to address. I don't want to, to I think you're going to hear enough discussion on the smell of the marijuana, the, the parking, all of those issues. That's really not my concern. My concern is the event itself and the safety of the event itself. Now, by current standards and the National Fire Protection Association, and then FDA 101, and then FDA 1. All of these standards for larger venues, for crowd management, the way the layout is, the, what I've been presented and what I've seen, doesn't comply with those standards. Um, the amount of people that are in the venue, for the amount of egress that is provided in the venue, is about, about half of what, what is required. Um, ultimately, it's the authority of your jurisdiction that this is one that makes the decision. Your, your, your city employees, fire marshal, um, I, I would just caution you, if looking to approve this, to have more information, because you're setting yourself up for potential disaster. Um, this, this is a situation, situation this, this is, is the point in time where when, when people ask why did something happen or how, how did this happen, this, this is the point in time in the planning decision that, that you, you have, have to make that decision. decision. Because, because if you go with a venue, venue that is too large for the egress, you're, you're just setting, setting yourself up for disaster. And I, would suggest you provide with, uh, uh, proceed with caution. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Chief, for the record, if you want, would you state your occupation? Uh, I am a firefighter. I've been in the fire service for 25 years now. I'm uh, also involved in emergency management for the past five. So, thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. And we have a
River Heights Boulevard. And to echo the previous people who came and spoke, um, I have issues with Park in the Parks as well. Um, and I hate to sound redundant, but um, pretty much all the same things I'm very, very curious of. Um, safety, a big one. Um, I live right on the other side of the rec, right next to the rec center. And just from the 12 years now that I own my home and live there, the carnival weekends are already wild. You know, we haven't had them for two years because of COVID, so I know that's going to be a big thing. And I'm actually looking forward to getting back to normal. But I use that as an example because this event is going to be huge. You know, I looked it up online, the acts that they're talking about coming bring a huge following. Um, members of the Wu-Tang Clan, I don't know if you all know who those are, but a lot of people of all ages love those guys. We have Damian Marley, you know, or Julian Marley, one of the Marlies. Those, Those are big headliners, so, so I'm, I'm curious, curious how we're going to do this and keep everything, everything safe. Because, you know, like my neighbors just said, it could go very bad. bad. Um, um, so, so I'm wondering how we're going to have parking, how, how is the traffic going to flow? Um, um, again, using the Memorial Festival weekend, you know, you know uh, traffic, traffic coming out, out of, of um, I guess, the little alleyways. People, people run, run out to traffic, traffic. like there's, there's accidents, accidents that happen all the time. time. Um, can, can we have temporary stop signs at the end of those driveways? Um, um, I know that they're, 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 they're paying for um, additional police, but are there also going to be EMTs on standby in case something happens? Um, you, know, you know, where, where is, is the money going to go from this event? Um, and how much money? Because again, this is one has the potential to be very lucrative for them. The cheapest tickets I think I saw was fifty dollars. Um, um, 52 to 420 dollars. And, and the last time I looked, they had sold out. So that's, so that's a lot of money. Um, so I'm curious, curious to know where that will go, how would that be invested back in the city? city. Um, again, just to echo what was previously said, how are we going to keep our residents safe? And then, and then what's going to happen about the cleanup? Locally, the people that live and work, as close as we do, we already have cleanup that we have to deal with from the Memorial Festival. That's, that's just going to be, what, three, four weeks prior to this festival? So as soon as we get over that one, I would like this one. <clears throat> so, so I, I would like to know what their, their plan is. And are you, you know, know really going to stress these, these things that we're really concerned about? Um, I guess that's it. Well, here's what you all have to say later about the event. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Good evening, I'm Matthew Abel, I'm the organizer of the event. My office is at 2930 East Jefferson in Detroit. So thank you for at least hosting this discussion. I know that um, in the beginning, uh, we expected that this would be welcome, um, but it doesn't seem to have gone that way. We think, we think there's, there's a way that this could happen in a controlled, controlled fashion, fashion. Uh, but specifically also about the fire protection, for example. Um, the state, state law requires that this be inspected, inspected and comply with all the fire codes. So, so if it doesn't, we're certainly, you know, that, that would be fixed. Uh, but I've not seen any evidence that it doesn't, doesn't comply with any of the fire codes. Um, we think this would be a, a good event for the city. Um, it, it is, it's, it's a, a cultural, cultural thing, and, and yes, not everybody loves it, but I'm sure, sure not everybody loves the carnival as well. As well. You, know, you know, everybody has a different uh, taste, and um, we, we would hope to do this in a safe, safe fashion where, where we, would, we, we would be invited back to, to do it again. again. We're, We're not, not trying to come in and trash the city and leave. leave. Um, we we haven't yet have organized crews to clean up trash in the neighborhood. But that, but that would, would be part, part of the final, final um, you know, the final plan. plan. Um, and, and so, anyway, anyway thank, thank you for considering it. it. We, we hope that, that I mean, we're, we're willing to, to uh, put restrictions, restrictions on, on the number of people. And, and frankly, frankly it hasn't sold out. out. I think there are, last, last night, or nine tickets that sold online. online. So, um, it's, it's not, not like people are busting down, down the doors. Um, as far as the profit, I would hope just to break even on the event. Not, not really, really trying, trying to make profit, profit out from, from it, we're trying to just bring, bring a, a fun, fun event. event. So, so anyway, thank, thank you for listening, and uh, I hope you vote to approve the event. Thank you. Thank you, man. Any other public discussion from the audience about the piece of Step forward and get your name and address. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, my name is Julie Diaz. Yes. I live at 237 31 Vance Avenue. Um, just, just to remind you guys of what happened with the school having events at the stadium, uh, particularly the last one that they held, it was a total debacle. And this just brings back my memories of that if you hold this farm in the park. They, they were understaffed, they, they weren't ready, ready for it. There were, there were people parking in other people's driveways refusing to move because there was no parking where they just didn't want to walk this far. Um, you know, know throwing trash, trash everywhere throughout the neighborhood. I voiced my opinion at the school board meeting right after that. They assured us that we that close to the school that, it, you know, that was a one-time event, it would never happen again. And I'm just concerned that the spark in the park would create another just chaos um, for the neighbors that uh, live by that area. So just make sure you're aware of that. It was not a pleasant experience whatsoever, that last thing that was told right there. I mean, we're, we're a lot. Yeah. 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 So, so it's just... just yeah, we're getting a lot of curses, though. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. And, and then, of course, the police didn't know that that was going to happen, so they were, were huge 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 We'll close public discussion. And then we'll move to the new business and the application for temporary marijuana event license. And you may have to start. Do we, you know, does the council want to talk to the applicants or do we want to have a discussion about this particular issue by ourselves? It is your pleasure, sir. We need to get the council to the answer where they would like to go. Would we like to have more comments from the applicants? I think it would be fair to get the applicants and answer the questions that were posed by the community. Okay, come on up. We'll keep it uh, semi-brief. Sure, what we do is we're given a uh, presentation that had been updated based on the last conversations that we had. We've got the microphones that we've been speaking to on Facebook. So, so the, the council received a uh, presentation based on the previous comments that you guys had. I was honestly hoping to go through that with you guys because you know, I think we did not ask for more originally. Prefer that. And well, I think that the, 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 the parking, parking situation did resolve itself, and then we got comments from the city of the city of Ferndale that they're not particularly happy about it as well. well and and then we, of course, I've got about 100 phone calls this week, and people walking in my business tell me they're not particularly happy about this event. Sure. I'm going to listen and have it open here. Well, well, go ahead. We, we do have approximately 3,000 parking spots allocated this time that were outlined on the map that was shared with you guys in the presentation based on your request. So, uh, in the terms of, you know, the, the police, yes, we are, you know, we're paying for the police to come and have additional overtime and um, someone was concerned about parking and damage, which is why we would require us to secure a bond. For the, for the park, park you, know, you know, in order to cover and compensate the city for any potential damages, why we've made, made extensive changes, changes to the event plan to, to take into account, account you know, know uh, potential damages. damages. Ball fields, sprinkler systems, we are, we are working, working in, in the event. Um, in terms of safety, safety, we have extensive event security plan for this event. event. We have, have uh, parking, parking attendants who are, who are going to be patrolling the neighborhood in the area, directing people to the designated parking spots. We can secure towing. Uh, services, services for the days of the event, so, so folks who are legally part can be towed. Uh, we, we will be plot, uh, we've already set the plot on the street, street putting, putting up no open parking, parking, parking signs in those, those neighborhood areas. areas. Um, we, we have, have you know, know uh, traffic, traffic, uh, traffic, traffic attendants that will be directing people to and from the designated walking, walking lots, lots and shuttle, shuttle services secured to take people back, back and forth to the mobile lots. So, so uh, in, terms in terms of crowd control, 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 we are working with uh, professional staging, staging, sound, light, and show companies, same company, 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 company that does staging for the Detroit, Detroit Electronic Music Festival, Music Festival each year. year. So, so uh, you know, they're, they're the ones who are informing us as to our uh, show stop seizures. 
and our crowd management procedures are also the people who spend time advising us as to how many people can successfully fit in the proposed venue space of 4.68 acres, approximately half the size of Park Plaza of the venue, which and annually sees attendance at events north of 50,000. You know, obviously we've already stopped limiting that number to somewhere around 4,000. There's been some additional concerns brought up to us in the last couple of days. We're willing really to take that number down to 3,500. It's really cutting us close to the bone, but at the same time it's very similar to the event size that you guys put on in there in the past, the Art Fair and uh, Memorial Day Fair. Uh, so, so we're really working really very, very hard to make sure that this is you know, limited, limited, controlled, that you guys have you know, you know, authority, authority, oversight here. We're trying very, very hard to meet any uh, you know, requirements you guys have. Uh, we're also willing to take the show end time back to 9.30 on, on Saturday, Saturday or Sunday. Sunday. Uh, this is obviously you know, it's a little going a bit late to go to 10.30 on Sunday. Sunday. Uh, as far as, far as where the money is going, we are going to be making donations, donations to the city uh, park, park department, department and the, the uh, this is our promise zone foundation, foundation, you know, to get back to the community. We uh, have volunteers planned for cleanup squads the day of the event, the ongoing as the event's going on. We'd also like to work with you guys to come up with a community cleanup day where we can get everybody a meal, some food, maybe some you know free entertainment for the neighborhood, and come out and clean the park up again. Um, we also, uh, per Councilman Lando's suggestion, we'd like to do a couple listening sessions in the neighborhood to help bring you know more concerns to the table so that we can make sure that they're addressed in a respectful uh, and timely manner. Um, so uh, I understand that there have been some negative experiences with previous events here, but guys, we didn't have anything to do with those events. We're working with professionals here. We're working with the guy who puts on our feet and eats for our tenting and for our physical infrastructure. Uh, we're working with a staging company that does professional shows all over the country. You know, uh, and we're really working very hard to accommodate your needs here. So I do hope that um, you know, if you have any other questions, I hope I can be able to answer them now. And I, I do hope that you'll vote in support of this. Any other comments? Just one uh, couple of things. There Who's will be an EMS. Your name? Just take your name. My name is Attorney Thomas Levine, and the the event is put on by the five attorneys um, that's being proposed here, who are the top attorney um, compliance attorneys in the state. I mean, other event organizers come to us to ask how how do you comply with all these state regulations. So you you know we have that going for us, and we're kind of the grassroots law firm that got this whole thing legalized in the first place. You know, Cannabis Council, since 1999, uh, my partner Matthew Abel has been operating as Cannabis Council. So, so we're excited to uh, move into this new license type. Um, it's, it, I know it's brand new and novel, and, um, but it's actually safer than the, all these alcohol events that are going on around the state. Um, you know, I, I haven't seen, uh, I went to law school with a bunch of uh, law enforcement people and they, they would often make the comparison. You know, it's, um, it's not a violent atmosphere that's created in this culture. Um, we would definitely back down on, you know, the different areas that the community has expressed the concern and we're happy to we, we hope to get your vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Council, you have any comments? This is something, Mr. Mayor, that I wanted to see happen really bad. I, uh, I've been involved in the legalization of cannabis movement for decades. It's something near and dear to my heart. And I was looking forward to this, but what I want and what is right for the community um, isn't always the same thing. So I have to uh, listen to our professionals that we hire, people in our, our employ, when uh, this looks just too big to manage, 
too uh, large to um, accommodate, especially on a first time. When I look at our art fairs, Alyssa, yeah. our first art fairs were much smaller than what they've yeah. become. Yeah, you know, like 600 people. Right, from 600 to 2,500. It's right. a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, so it was. It is with a sad heart and with much regret, I moved to deny the Michigan Cannabis Association's application for Spark in the Park as proposed because of the size, scope, and timing of this proposed temporary ma marijuana and music event and its effect on the public health, safety, and welfare of the proposed Spark in the Park Festival. Support. Roll call, please. Councilmember Lakiro? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McFall? Yes. Councilmember Londo? No. Councilmember Sullivan? Yes. Mayor Webb? Yes. <clears throat> Motion passes. And I'd like to thank everyone that came out and talked on this issue and gave us the, and the applicants that gave us a lot of information. And we also did some of our own research as well, and we had to listen to our residents and what their concerns were as well. And this is a park that's in the middle of neighborhoods, and it makes a difference being in the situation that that park sets. And I feel that that is truly what it is, is a neighborhood park. And the 4,000 people we have were the Memorial Day event is spread over four and a half days. And it's mainly about families. And that's what we, in the art fair, is all about families and other events that we sponsor here in our city are homegrown. And we try to target those for our families and make it the best and safest events that we can. Not to say that your event would, would not be safe, but we are just siding on the side of caution, considering the size and we applaud you for all the recommendations of what you tried to do in controlling this. And but we're not. We leave the door open for something still to be proposed, something more manageable. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, you know, again, this is no knock on the applicants. They did, I think, everything they could to try to accommodate yes. every one of the concerns that we had. In the end, I think the concerns for the community were all primarily around the size of the event and the scope of the event. Exactly. There was not, and you heard today, there was no groundswell of opposition because this event involved marijuana. I think you relayed everyone's concerns that that was not going to be a problem with the ventilation and how you had things arranged. I think in the end, simply comes down to the size of the event versus the venue for the event and the logistics uh, and the logistical problems that it created. So it, again, I think the door is open for, you know, uh, a more, for, for an event of some sort. Yeah, I was going to say scale down. Right. <laughs> Something that might be able to fit. So we know what we're getting into. We have absolutely no context to judge what this thing will be based on any experiences that we've had in the past. And the first obligation of this mayor and this council and this administration is to protect the residents of the city of Hazel Park. And right now, it's just a big unknown. And that, again, that is no knock on you guys. You guys are, you know, high quality individuals who really have tried very hard uh, to answer every question that everyone has posed. It's just, it's size and duration are concerning at this point. This is, um, Your Honor, if I may. Uh, sure. I also would like to, to thank the applicants and uh, all the time that you guys have spent addressing this body over the course of the last couple months. And I'd also like to apologize for providing you guys a moving target uh, that felt like it changed quite a bit. Um, I, and I hope that, as you've all indicated, that we are looking for a scaled back event. But uh, I hope that you guys receive some clarity from us on what that looks like. And hopefully we can find some sort of middle ground. I'd like to thank all the residents that called me, came by the shop, and showed up at this council meeting for voicing their opinions and their concerns, pro or con, for the issue. 
and that's what the democratic process is all about. And thank you. Any other council people have any more comments on this issue? All right, we'll move on. Motion to approve consent agenda. I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay. Discussion, dissension? Motion passes. Motion to approve a special land use request for hair braiding facility at 21409 John R. Case number 22-01. Mr. Mayor, the administration recommends approval. Council? I move that we approve the special land use request for a hair braiding facility at 21409 John R. Case number 22-01. Any more discussion? I didn't make you read the case number, sorry, I didn't cut you off. <laughs> it's in the record. <laughs> sorry about that. Show cause hearings. 1109 East Pearl. Is Mr. Bench here to talk about this or anyone? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I do not believe that Mr. Pinch is in attendance today. We do have uh, Lynn Cup from the building department. She may be able to answer any specific questions uh, that you have, but uh, uh, I will read into the record the uh, joint administration's recommendations uh, based on the following structure it is not non-conforming and required to be brought up to 1,200 square feet. Property has extensive violations, including excessive mold growth and unsanitary conditions existing. Flooring that has visible failure occurring, sloped and sinking. It appears to be a structural failure, and the hearing officer's order on 1110-2021 to demolish the property within 30 days is recommended. Uh, we recommend you affirm the hearing officer's order. Council, uh, do I need to open up a hearing here? You do need to open up public discussion. Okay. I'll open up a public hearing on 1109 East Pearl. Is anyone wishing to speak on this particular address? Seeing no one. Close the public hearing. I'm open for a motion. I'll move the recommended motion that the structure at 2, I'm sorry, 1109 East Pearl be demolished within 30 days. Support. Any more discussion, dissension? I just wanted to say that um, I drive past this building and I have watched it just over the last few months just get worse and worse and worse. So I'm very happy to see this on the show. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Motion passes. Uh, 24520 North Chrysler will open up for public discussion. Public hearing open. Anyone want to talk about this particular property? We're going uh, to Mr. Today. Mayor, we have uh, uh, Dwight is here. He is a prospective purchaser. Uh, the property in question, 24520 North Chrysler Drive. That is the uh, landmark church property. Uh, Dwight here is uh, representing uh, developers who plan to purchase this project and develop it. He will explain to you a little bit about what his... Uh, plan is, and then it is my suggestion that we have a study session to go over in depth uh, his proposal on this property. I know that uh, virtually everyone in town has been waiting for action on uh, this eyesore, and I think we have a viable plan here. So Dwight, if you would like to introduce yourself and uh, briefly uh, let the council know what your plans and intentions are. Good evening, uh, Mayor Council. Uh, my name is Dwight Bellew. I'm uh, <clears throat> representing DCR Landmark Development LLC, which is the entity that has a purchase agreement with the church to buy the property and develop the property into uh, apartments. Uh, I met with uh, city manager and Jeff uh, yesterday to discuss a brownfield plan that we are forwarding to the Michigan Land Bank. And the study session that uh, Ed mentioned will discuss the uh, brownfield plan. And part of the part of the plan that we're proceed, proceeding with the uh, land bank with is that we have an agreement with the land bank verbally to buy the land, and I have a meeting with them to start that process on Monday. And what they will do is buy the land from the church. The church will be paid off and the land bank will then hold the land and sell it to us for development. 
And the reason we would do that is because the land bank will be allowed to recapture some of the TIF reimbursement that uh, the developer would normally receive. So we're going that route to get the, get the purchase agreement done sooner than later, get the church out, have them move out so we can demolish the building as soon as possible, which um, we anticipate the closing with the land bank anywhere from 45 to 60 days. And that will trigger the church's purchase, and they'll be out. And then at that point, we can start the demolition. So, Mr. Mayor, the administration's recommendation is to uh, set a study session on this within the next couple of weeks so that we can sit down and we can review on the brownfield plan and the uh, TIF capture plan. And uh, Dwight can let you know a little bit about what his plans are in terms of uh, the housing that he plans to be developed that site. I move that we table agenda item 24520 North Chrysler Drive until uh, a full study session on April 26th at 6 p.m. Second. Any more discussion? We may need flexibility on that date, but it will be somewhere around there. In the next 14 days. We, in the next 14 days. Okay. Change the motion. Uh, I amend my motion to no later then. I still second. Okay. Just some more discussion? I just have a question for Dwight. Yes. Uh, do you have experience doing these types of developments in the past? Yes, I do. I've done uh, 150 unit apartment complex in Detroit, uh, developed single family houses in Detroit, um, multi family commercial developments in Detroit, and uh, other cities in uh, St. Croix. Virgin Islands. <laughs> have you done the one with the, where it's a land bank with the county and TIF? Well, I have not, I've done brownfield and TIFs, yes. Okay. I have not done where the land bank buys it, but that's yes. Yeah. This is something kind of, new and not in innovative, right. and uh, this may be the party that needs to be involved to finally bring a resolution to this thing. Right. And it, it just, you know, it just, the history. it almost guarantees the brownfield to be approved by right. the yeah. And this would, this development would cover the entire property, not yes. just okay. Four or five acres. Thank you. And we'll talk about what kind of amenities go on the property at the next meeting. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I'd like to see a, a good plan. Okay. For the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Motion passes. Takes us to. Boards, commissions, communication from the city attorney. We forgot department heads. Department heads. Department heads. Oh, department heads here. Oh, they're all here. Okay. Any department heads wishing to speak? The amazing Jeffrey Campbell. Uh, first off, I just want to uh, say hello to everyone. Uh, I just I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, on Monday, did it start? The tree. Uh, the tree program Oakstem that we were uh, sort of the pilot program was this year. Uh, they started planting the trees. Uh, so if you go down Hazelwood or uh, Harding, Harding, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know how far they got over. Uh, they did my neighbor's house. There you go. So you would see them. They got the two stakes next to them, but it's nice. It's good to see. Um, and then hopefully we get the 86 trees up within the week, and then we can work on what happens next year. And hopefully they continue the program. And if you guys remember. Uh, our portion is um, generously going to be subsidized by the Sutar Sutar Meyer Foundation. Thank you so much. Um, is there a way we can get that information on social media? We can. Because I saw someone posted a picture of a tree in their yard and they had no idea why it was there. Okay. They were happy, but they didn't know why. Well, they signed up. They signed up. They signed up. They signed up. We only put them on if they signed up. <laughs> they, had, they had to sign a year ago. Yeah, right. They, they, they signed up. Probably so. forgot. Yeah. <laughs> and even if no. she didn't, I'm glad she likes it. Right. We'll get another one if we have. To. That's right. right. Do we? Um, can you tell me? Do, oops, sorry. Do we have the um, the areas where these 86 trees are going? Like yeah, basically it's so we're doing the so just to reiterate how we are operating this. It will go in after uh, the tree you know the tree checkup, the doctor checkup of the trees goes, and then the sidewalk replacement has come in. So we're not creating additional root problems by planting new trees, even though these shouldn't be um, the type of trees that go crazy with roots and uproot sidewalks. 
That being said, we're doing it after we've done already the maintenance up front and then putting in the trees afterwards. So that area that we looked at was mostly um, north of nine in between, um, well actually all the way to Woodward Heights. So basically that's kind of the area where we were, asked people if they wanted these, they had to elect them. We didn't demand anyone have them because we want them to be invested and take care of them as well. Um, also, these trees have a two-year guarantee, I should mention that, uh, so that's good to know. Uh, and then we placed some along uh, a stretch of East George from DeQuinder to Merrill, where there was not a single tree on the opposite side where there's a business budding um, that would serve as a beautification and noise buffer, frankly, for the business that might occur there. Great. So nice. you could call it a Warren tree. It's a Warren tree. Yeah. <laughs> It's a horrible joke. No. Um, Jeff, is there anything else you'd like to share? Not, not, not yet. yet. Right, we'll do it. Right. So you're not qualified to make dad jokes just yet. <laughs> Slow it down. Okay. Uh, any other department heads want to come up and talk? Seeing no one. Not going once, going twice. You don't look all excited. No, Jeff wants to So just to make sure, um, we are doing a uh, we are publishing a stormwater plan. Yay. A public, yeah, public participation plan. And we're doing a public participation part. And so what we will be doing is we will be placing um, the plan on the water department's webpage. And if you have a comment, you can submit the comment via email. To view the plan non-electronically, you can come to the water department between 10 and 2, Monday through Thursday. Um, and this is to meet our equal obligations. Uh, and then we might actually have a brief uh, public comment period at the next meeting if anyone want, wishes to speak about it. Is that it? Uh, the, yes, and also this plan it was only coverage uh, for stormwater, so if people are curious about drinking water or uh, sanitary sewers, it's not. It's a different plan altogether. This is uh, strictly for uh, stormwater. The MS4 permit that the city currently holds. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Again, once again, any other department heads wishing to come up? Do you have anything else, Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> he is handsome. Who is to the city attorney, Mrs. Schwartz? Yes, I just wanted to say thank you um, to the administration and all of the department heads and all those responsible for the efforts for West Nile uh, prevention and keeping our neighborhoods safe. It's a very serious and debilitating um, disease. And um, I see that um, the ongoing efforts for the city to protect the public has been approved tonight, and I wanted to say um, a special thank you for that. Thank you. Amanda, did you have anything? No, thank you. Okay. Chief? <laughs> yes. Are you ready? City manager? Well, the Michigan system of uh, municipal finance does remain fundamentally broken. So I want to get that out of the way because I say that at every meeting because I never want uh, my mayor and council and people at Hazel Park to forget that. Uh, we've got a lot of employees in the office today and I want to thank them all for all the hard work that they put in on uh, a daily basis to keep this thing going forward. And uh, so thank you and thank you all for being here tonight. It's, uh, we appreciate very much all the hard work that you do. Uh, I know tonight was a hard decision. And I know it was especially hard decision for uh, Andy LeCuro, who is friends with all of those people, introduced me to all of those people years before uh, marijuana ever became legal in the uh, state of Michigan. And for the record, we're not mad at them. We don't hate them anything they brought forward, it's simply too big, possibly, for the venue. So we look forward, hopefully, uh, to working with them, possibly, in the future. But I'm proud of Council for protecting the people of Hazel Park. That's our number one job. And uh, again, uh, very tough vote. I want to thank all the residents that came out and expressed uh, opinions on this. I want to thank all the residents that called my office, some of whom left their names, some of whom didn't. Some of them made up some new names for me and other members of the uh, city of Hazel Park, and that's okay. It just makes the 
the job more fun. <laughs> so, uh, but again, uh, tough decision tonight. Uh, not an easy one, and uh, you know, but it does show that this mayor and this council uh, they do listen and they do very, they they very carefully and very heavily have to weigh some decisions sometimes, and those decisions are not easy decisions. So. Uh, it's a thankless job. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'll smell Luke London. First, I wasn't ready. Um, I, I mean, they're all gone, but I'd like to thank everybody uh, that came to address Spark Media Park, and I would like to let them know that uh, it's budget season. Uh, We're going to be coming up with our city budget within the next couple of months, and that affects them a lot more than this festival would, so I encourage them to continue staying active in the democratic process and uh, informing us of their opinion. And then uh, additionally, since uh, the last meeting, we uh, cut out a little early and council members did not give remarks. I wanted to let everybody know that our city is going to grow by one additional constituent. Uh, so my wife and I are going to be welcoming a boy this September. Yay! You know, Mr. Mayor, to, to speak to what uh, Luke was talking about, the budget, and I should have brought this up during my comments, I didn't think about it then, if you'll indulge me. Uh, we get a lot of questions and comments about the number of dispensaries that we have here in the city of Hazel Park. Well, let me explain to you why we, you know, we did embrace uh, the marijuana dispensaries, and it's because we actually are in desperate need of additional municipal revenue because we're part of the Michigan Employee Retirement System. And the Michigan Employee Retirement System changed their actuarial assumptions uh, for all of its members a couple of years ago, and that resulted in an extremely significant increase in the required contributions that the city of Hazel Park has to make to that retirement system. So we've earmarked the revenues for uh, marijuana to go to that payment. Now, I saw somebody post on social media, oh, well, the residents don't benefit from that. That's just the employees. No. That bill is the first bill that has to be paid. So please understand that you're paying that bill no matter what. There is no choice. If we don't pay the bill, they will go to court and they will seek a judgment levy against the city of Hazel Park. And what that means is that every taxpayer will get an additional charge on their property taxes to cover those unpaid pension obligations. So that is the one bill. You will pay that bill before you will pay for police. You will pay that bill before you will pay for fire. You will pay that bill before any other bill. So, yes, indirectly, residents and the citizens do benefit from uh, the marijuana dispensaries. We also raised over $100,000 this year for the Promise Zone, our Promise Zone dinner. Probably 80% of that money was raised by the cannabis industry. They've created a lot of jobs, they've renovated a lot of buildings, and by and large, it's been, I think, a successful endeavor for the city of Hayes Park. No one up here is interested in more dispensaries, though. Uh, we're actually in litigation with uh, two other dispensaries that want to come here because we believe that the market is at a saturation point. So I hope that you understand that it's not always within our control who gets to come here because private property has some rights and we have to try and balance the interests of the city uh, when we make decisions and if the owners of those properties disagree, then they have the right to go to court. So sometimes those decisions are made beyond the city of Hazel Park. So I hope everybody knows and understands, and I hope that gives them a little bit more of a perspective. And again, the amount of money that we're generating from uh, marijuana dispensaries still doesn't come close to just meeting the increase that we had from MERS, let alone the entire pension bill. So. We're doing everything we can to give the people of Hazel Park the best possible services that we can in the, you know, in the face of what is truly a broken system of municipal finance. So uh, I hope everybody understands. And another thing, we hear about the ARP money, the uh, 
uh, the ARPA money from the federal government. Well, that was very inequitably distributed. Smaller cities got a third of the money per capita that larger cities got. So uh, again, uh, Hazel Park got $1.7 million. Royal Oak got like $25 million, okay? If we were getting the same level of money per capita that we got, we got about, we'd get about $6 billion. So it's completely inequitable the way that the money was distributed. It was, for small communities, almost a disaster because we had to compete for employees against those other more well-funded cities. So it's important that maybe I need to spend more time talking about meat and potatoes financial issues so the residents and mayor and council understand, everyone understands the challenges that we face. So we're doing these things to make sure we can give you the best possible services. So if anybody wants to know more, and gee, I can keep talking. Uh, I don't think anyone wants to hear me talk anymore tonight. Well, please call my office. I'll be happy to talk with you at length. Thank you. Sorry. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ditto. Yeah. Uh, Councilperson Sullivan. Thank you so much. Um, I also want to thank um, everybody that uh, came out tonight to speak um, on whatever issues you came out to speak on um, during public comment and during the civic announcements. I want to thank the um, organizers of Spark in the Park for um, potentially, you know, trying to bring a really a very cool, innovative event to Hazel Park. And uh, I definitely look forward to seeing, hopefully, um, more manageable for our infrastructure presentation um, or similar events. Um, I think our city is poised to really kind of seize these opportunities of innovation that come to us and I really love that um, we get the opportunity to have these discussions and really listen to um, the leaders of our communities as well as the stakeholders of our communities and our residents uh, in, in practice as uh, Councilman Longo, Longo said um, in the democratic process and have people involved in what makes the city run and how we get to these decisions. Um, I also want to encourage people to come out for our budget meetings. Um, I am on, I am online answering questions as often as possible, as factually as possible with statistics and numbers. I have an entire file in my phone of um, the tax numbers and the data that I have researched on my own so that I can bring it to residents when they have misunderstandings about where the money is, how much the money is, where it's going, why it's going there. Um, but I really wish that people would participate in this more on the front end because it's much easier to prevent disinformation than it is to correct the disinformation. So um, please continue to be involved in the city. And um, I also want to thank the hundreds of people. It wasn't hundreds of people, but um, the, the people that I had the ability to speak to about um, issues in the city this past week, it's really brought people out and, and have them reach out for contact, and I appreciate that because um, I love what I get to do as a city council person. So um, everybody stay safe, and if you celebrate Easter, have a happy Easter. Um, if you celebrate Passover, happy Passover. Um, happy spring. That's it. Hopefully. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, this whole spark in the park thing, I really wanted to see it happen. You don't always get to get what you want. That's, that's about being grown up here and making choices. That's what we were elected to do, is make the tough choices. Um, the, I mean, these gentlemen that spoke here, I've known for a long time. It's not a great feeling to uh, disappoint people that you know, but that's what we had to do. And they do have the opportunity. It had nothing to do with them personally. We want them to come back and propose something that would be more manageable for our community. That being said, the weather is great today. You can get out and still enjoy some of it. Watch out for the bicyclists. We're all over. There's the Hazel Park Bike Club Wednesday nights behind the uh, high school, but they haven't started yet, officially. And uh, bicyclists, get a light on your bike for night riding. It is a law in the state of Michigan. I have lights. Free. Yes. Cool. If anybody needs a light, please email me or message my Council Facebook page, I have free SEMCOG bike lights. Yes, excellent. Thank you, thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, the, the weather's great. I see that you know, flowers are blooming, so watch out for people are out more with the good weather. Um, 
in closing. Thank you for everybody coming out and all the people's comments. Uh, again, it wasn't about against the cannabis industry at all. It was the size and scope in the event and what we thought we could accommodate. And we do have to listen to our staff and the people that we pay to for their advice. And again, I praise you before, I'll praise you one more time in 20 plus years. Andy, you have always been a man who has shown incredible political courage no matter what the issue was, and I have nothing but the utmost respect for you. Thank you. But for the record, at the last staff meeting, it was a unanimous recommendation against approval. From every department head that was in attendance. That's what I'm saying. So anyway, if you love somebody, tell them. If you have children, hug them every day and tell them you love them. And thank you for coming up. Have a great holiday and great spring. Thank you. Mayor uh, Proton. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would also like to um, to comment on the spark of the park. Like, there, like Ed has mentioned several times, that we're not philosophically against. Obviously, we got a lot of marijuana stuff going on in the city, so we're obviously not philosophically against it. But one of the things I did want to add to your list of things that the marijuana industry has done is they actually employ a lot of our neighbors, and they're very good-paying jobs. Uh, it's actually I know of several people that have moved to the city that work. Uh, for the dispensaries, um, and they were able to purchase a, a new house here. They were first-time home buyers, so to me, that that is a huge deal. Uh, so they're they're very good paying jobs, and it, it, the industry is, is legit. It's a legit industry. So, um, but I also would like to remind people, much like Andy did with the bicyclist, uh, I have a lot of kids that live by my house, and people are flying down the roads. Uh, unnecessarily, like it's like they speed from uh, stop sign to stop sign, uh, as though it's a, a game. Uh, but it is not a game because if you hit a kid, that is not a game. So please slow down in the neighborhoods. Uh, I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Again, I'd like to say thank you to everyone that participated in this process. I'd like to thank everybody that came to my door, to ring my phone. I had at least five a day at my shop of people wanting to talk about this issue. And that was last, for the last two, three weeks. Uh, it's been a contentious issue. It's been a long time since we had a really good issue that got people worked up. It's been a while. And uh, I think it's good to remind people you know, that we do do our job here. We look at every topic, whether it be this topic or any other topic, and we try to make a balance. We look at the pros and cons of each individual topic, and we draw a conclusion. That's our job. And we try to do it the best way possible. If it takes us a week longer, so be it. If it needs more looking at from an attorney, then we'll do that. But we will find the right avenue to approach any particular issue that may be controversial or maybe not. But we're going to make the difference in the due diligence of doing that process. I'd like to say thank you for coming out one more time, and thanks to my council people here to doing their job, as well as myself and the rest of our city staff. Thank you, and have a good night. Motion to adjourn. So moved. To board. <laughs>